today on Dr. Phil. They're married. Do you have a girlfriend? I do, Dr. Phil. But are they choosing other people? My wife brought a guy home. My daughter heard them going at it in the bedroom. Over their own kids? Did you have a date that night at the house? Yeah, but I didn't sleep with anybody. He left at 3 in the morning. Were you there? She told me so many lies about my own father. I did not tell your dad. You did too. Stop lying. If you've blatantly lied to me, we're done. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. says his wife Rachel was smart, beautiful, and fun. He wanted nothing more than to make her happy when he popped the question and put a ring on her finger. But now, 19 years and six children later, George says he is married to the wife from hell. Maybe I was just too stupid to run away from her. With every child that was born, she had another nail in my back. At this point, I feel like she has her nails on my back and her foot on my throat. I don't know why she didn't consider herself married. We were separated. I told him she wasn't single. The only thing she really is is crazy. If I could have crawled through the phone, I would have choked the life out of her. Well, I have been quoted as saying you divorce a very different woman than you marry. And that certainly seems to be George's opinion because it does not sound like years of wedded bliss. George says his wife has turned into a jealous, controlling cheater who is determined to destroy him. My wife, Rachel, is a wife from hell. We've been together 19 years. Rachel and I separated three months ago. We have six kids together. Rachel's temper revealed itself shortly after we uh, started dating. Rachel gets very angry if I don't lavish her with attention. She'll call me at least 30, 40 times a day. It texts me probably the same. You have to answer your phone. I guess you really don't want anything to listen. You never really did. We fight a lot. We argue over money and our kids. She was violent a handful of occasions where she clawed me, pushed me, hit me. My wife is a nymphomaniac. Well, I know that she's had at least eight affairs. I found an account she had set up on a dating site. Rachel was meeting men in chat rooms, sending nude pictures. One of them read, I can't wait to get my hands all over you. When Rachel's boyfriend calls, she jumps. I have told Rachel that she is putting her kids in jeopardy for trying to pursue this guy. Rachel, to this day, denies anything. She puts the kids second to her love life. She left my 12-year-old in charge of an eight and two seven-year-olds, and she had given them melatonin so they could fall asleep, and then she could sneak off for the night. She is a very evil person. The cheating, the lying, the backstabbing. With a wife like her, who needs an enemy? Yeah, but Rachel says, wait just a minute, you also divorce a very different man than you married. And she says, George is just using her as a scapegoat, and he's really the problem. My current relationship with George is every time we see each other, it ends up in a fight. George is lazy. He never lifted a finger around the house. And the rest of the time, he was gone working. George was only there for two out of the six births of our children. Today, it still affects me. He missed the important part of our life together, and he can't get that back. I resent George not being around. I've had one affair. George thinks I've had a handful. Recently, I noticed George emotionally distant from me. He was cold and abrasive, just like, get away from me. I don't want you touching me. I don't want you hugging me. I found out George has a girlfriend. It hurts. Things weren't great between us, but I didn't even imagine that this was going on. I want a divorce. There is no coming back for me from this. 
Okay, so why are we here? I need help with my wife, Dr. Phil. Uh, I want everybody to know what kind of wife I have. Um, why? You know what? Ultimately, I want my kids. I, I want to. I, I don't think that she's a fit mother for them. So is this a custody fight? And yeah, yeah okay, it does sound like a custody battle. It does. Uh, now that you face it or put it that way, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, character assassination. Yes, does that sound better? Yeah, it does. So it you're is... here to assassinate her character. Yeah, so that I, I. So you can get into court, and get your kids away from her. It, yeah, ultimately, yes. Okay, and so it you... is real easy because all you have to do is just see what she's doing. Uh, the fact that she's leaving my 12-year-old in charge of the kids overnight. All right, so because... you believe she's an unfit mother? She is. She is. Yep. And I don't care who she sleeps with as long as she doesn't do it in front of my children. Right. Which so she has. So does which the court. She has. Yep. A couple of weeks ago, she brought a guy home, <laughs> and uh, in front of my kids, my kids were were two of them were awake down in the basement. And they heard the whole thing. My daughter was there, too. She heard the whole thing. What did she hear? Well, she heard them going at it in the bedroom. How old's your daughter? Uh, 18. And so did my 12-year-old. And my 8-year-old told me the same thing. So your 12 and 8-year-old told you, we heard mom come in from a bar with a guy going at it in the bedroom. Well, they just said that they were downstairs playing video games in the basement. And this is a three-story house. And they heard the bed the rocking. The video games haven't and worked. And what floor is the bedroom on. it's up in the third floor so they were in the basement yep and she was on the third floor yep and they heard her they heard, yeah they were going at it yeah <laughs> you know dr phil dr phil and we thought it was her boyfriend her her boyfriend but as it turns out it wasn't her boyfriend because she bragged to my daughter that it was another guy that she met no it wasn't so if the third floor's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. That's your. I guess. Well, your kids are in the basement and they hear this, right? Uh, I. So don't... y'all have six children. We do, yeah. And he's there, but he's there for two of them, and four he didn't show up right. for the birth. Is what I'm saying. I was working, Doctor Phil. You know what? I, I'm an over. I was an over the road truck driver, so that gave her plenty of time to to do what she's been doing. You know what? One time she told me, she says, "What am I supposed to do when I get horny?" That's what she told me. She says, what am I supposed to do? I said, you know what? You're supposed to wait for me to get home, is what I told her. <laughs> That's what a, a good wife would do. Did you have eight affairs? No. Well, of course you're not going to admit to it, Rachel. No, I you're not. You're never going to admit to it. You know, you want to know how you know she's lying? Because she's, her lips are moving. Do you have a girlfriend? You know what I do, Dr. Phil? You know why I have a girlfriend? Beca because I finally got fed up of, of uh, all her uh, affairs that she's having. Did, did you send her some text messages about your girlfriend? No, I didn't send them to her. I sent them to my dad. And she happened to intercept it because she's got a bug in my phone, Dr. Phil. No. <laughs> she's got spyware. You, you know what? She gave me a phone preloaded with spyware, Dr. Phil. You can get spyware on your phone. If your wife wanted to keep tabs on you, all she has to do is download this stuff. <laughs> I don't know how long that's been. Well, what was in this text message she intercepted? I think I just told my dad that I had a girlfriend. Didn't you send him some pictures? I sent him a picture of her, yeah. Pretty close up. I sent it to her just recently, Dr. Phil. Well, wait a minute. I asked you if you sent her a picture. Right, right. But sent her a text about your girlfriend. You said, no, I sent it to my dad, and she intercepted it through spyware. No, no, okay. no, no, because she had... And now you're saying, no, I did send it to her, but just recently. No, 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 no. Okay, I misunderstood what you were saying. Okay? I don't think you did. No, I did, because you know what? She was telling me that she was ugly. My girlfriend was ugly. And I said, you know what? Is this ugly? You sent that to your wife. Yeah, I did, yep. Yeah. yeah, it looks bad. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> We're going to find out what Rachel did that made George want to crawl through the phone and choke the life out of her. His words, not mine. Plus, I want to ask Rachel about the melatonin moment when we come back. I created a phantom account on Yahoo to try to catch Rachel. I chatted with her for like two days. I love to catch her lying and rub it in her face, which isn't hard because Rachel lies a lot. She can't tell the truth to save her life.
And later, somebody is flat out lying to me. You need to hear what I'm saying or we're done. In, in 2011, I went on a trip to California. Rachel was angry because I didn't bring her along. My son made a video through the window where I could see Rachel and this guy sitting right next to each other. You can hear kissing. My daughter Katrina was home and later she could hear this guy snoring in my bed. I was very crushed that she would bring anybody uh, to the house, let alone in our bed that we shared. If I could have crawled through the phone line to choke her, I would have. Well, George says his wife, Rachel, is a crazy, jealous, calculating woman who drove him, drove him to start cheating eight months ago after he found nude pictures of her on their family computer. Now, he says his wife even had sex with another man in their marital bed while their children were home. Now, look, first off, did that happen? I brought somebody to the house, but didn't have sex. He didn't even stay at the house. Yes, he did, Rach. He left at 3 in the morning. He got there at 9 o'clock. Did not stay there. From 9 to 3? Did not and stay there. And then you there. borrowed money from our son so you could buy booze for him? No, and Then I you never didn't. even paid him mo okay, the money back. Did, did you have a date that night at the house? Yeah, but I didn't sleep with anybody. Okay, yeah. But you did have a date there at the house? I did. Okay. And it was, and at the time, I thought it was a harmless friendship. In our bed naked, harmless. I'm not. Were, did, were you, were you were, there? Well, no, you were, that's you why went, you brought him. He, why else would you right, bring him? But he doesn't know I slept with him. I'm asking okay. the questions I'm sorry. here. I'm sorry, doctor. <laughs> you, you had a date that night. You could call it that, yeah. Well, I did. Would you call it that? <laughs> you had a date there sure. at the house, okay? Did you make out with him in the kitchen? We kissed, but that was it. You said... But, you my daughter I... is sitting at the kitchen table. You think I'm all over a guy? I heard you. Dr. Phil, she left the phone on so I could hear her. I heard 50 minutes of the conversation. So you did make out with him in the kitchen, and you just told me that your daughter was at the table, the kitchen table. I didn't make out with We kissed probably when she went in the other room. Probably like the other when she went in the other room? Well, I wouldn't do it in front of my kids, yeah. You wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. Have you been unfaithful? during your marriage? I was. Not, okay. not sexually intimate. Okay. When I said unfaithful, I didn't mean did you root for the other team. <laughs> I meant did you cheat on your husband while you were married? Come on, we're, we're yes, here. Yes, we're right. Well... Yes, I did. Okay. But nothing in, in the last three years. Okay, you've been married 19. No, we've been married 15. We've been together 19 years. With how many different guys, Rach? I've only seen one. I've met two different guys. Okay, and do you want this marriage to be over with? Yes. Are you still emotionally invested in him? No. I'm just trying to figure things out so I can help I know. you find a, a, a peaceful place to be No, I, j I want... I, I just want the best for our kids, and, I, and the then best for our kids... Give them to me, Rach. Give them the to me. The best for our kids is getting along. You want the best for our kids? Let me have them. Are you in a relationship now? I am. Does this boyfriend know about your third floor visitor? I have not brought anybody to my house. Yeah. Okay, so that's a lie. It is. So the kids are lying if they say that. He's lying if he says that. And if my kids are up when I come home from the bar, uh -huh. yeah, they should be in bed. Dr. Phil, can I say something? Not yet. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you having, when, when you go, do you go out some? Yes. Do you go to bars and? Yeah. Who babysits the children? Well, my daughter. And she's how old? 18. Uh -huh. And do you ever leave the 12 year old? My 12 year old has, babysit? has once and he has when I went to, back to work. Uh huh. Watches them after school, and then, you know, I have so my... So the 12-year-old babysits the 7-year-old and the 7-year-old okay. twins and... Yes, with having my parents come and check on them. Uh -huh. My parents live a block 
from me. Uh -huh. He thinks you're not taking care of your children. Right. Are you neglecting your children and partying too much? I probably did over Christmas, for between Christmas and New Year's. I wasn't gone every night. Well, that's kind of an important time in children's lives. Right. Where was he? I'm asking you where you were. Well, I know where I was. The bar? And, yeah, I went out. Okay, we're going to meet uh, George's 24-year-old daughter and find out why she has not talked to Rachel or her father in two years. We'll be right back. I hate Rachel. It physically makes me sick to think about different things that have happened and knowing that my little brothers are still in that household. Rachel is totally mentally unstable. She's a crazy person. My two oldest daughters live with their mom, and Rachel always interfered with my visitation with them. Rachel would get angry if I would go visit. She just has a jealous rage about her. She would lock the door. On many occasions, Rachel would throw dishes on the floor, and it happened so frequently that I stopped interacting with my daughters. To this day, I don't have a very good relationship with, with them. George and Rachel both say they're living in a sham of a marriage with nonstop fighting and infidelity. Now, they've not seen George's 24-year-old daughter, Chelsea, in two years after they deleted her from their Facebook accounts during an argument. Now, Chelsea says she hates her stepmother, Rachel, for brainwashing her father and destroying their relationship. My dad and Rachel's relationship really makes me angry. I hate Rachel. Rachel was controlling. It was her way or no way. She's 100% the reason why I don't have a relationship with my dad. It's ruined. I haven't really spoken to my father or seen any of my siblings since September of 2012. I didn't know Rachel didn't want me there, and she liked the fact that I quit talking to my dad and that I didn't have anything to do with the kids' lives. As a parent, I think Rachel is completely unfit. All Rachel really cares about is herself and her needs, her desires, her wants. Rachel is totally mentally unstable. She's a crazy person. It physically makes me sick to think about different things that have happened and knowing that my little brothers are still in that household. I probably wouldn't have laid hands on her, but I would have liked to see the fear in her eyes. I never want to have a relationship with Rachel, ever. I think that she's a horrible person. Chelsea, I'm glad you're here. Now, you don't have a relationship with Rachel at all. No. And you actually don't have much relationship with your dad either. Mm -mm. So he's estranged from Rachel, but yet you, you still don't have a relationship with him even though they've split up. Or have they? Um, Is I... this just chapter 42 in their saga? or what? what? Actually, we're talking more than we have been. <sighs> Chelsea, <clears throat> you're the one with the long hair that I asked the question. Um, so I'll let you answer instead of your father. The whole relationship that they have, I just, it's way too confusing. I don't even know, you know, they're trying at different times to work it out. And they're cheating on each other so much that I just stay out of it. Like, I just told them, you know, if you're going to be with this woman who claims to, you know, parent their, you know, their children, um, and she's, you know, letting these men come over to their house while all my siblings are home. I have text messages from my little brother saying, Rachel took money from me. She's buying booze for this man. They're in the bedroom. You, you know, they're, God only knows what they're doing in there. And I told my dad that. And at the time, he had said, he needs to worry about the kids in that household. And, you know, I wasn't in that household, thank God. And um, he said that he needed to help control this situation. Let me stop you right there, because somebody is flat out lying to me. And when I'm flat out lied to, I, I, I want to get this straight or I'm done. Because I can't help people if they lie to me. Right. Now, I ask you straight up, are you bringing men to the house around the children? Now, don't let me finish. And I ask that because one thing I know 
is that when non-biological males are in the home around underage children, the risk of abuse and sexual molestation goes up multiples. Some estimate it goes up as high as 31 times normal if there are non-biological males in the home around underage children. So just from a forensic standpoint, one of the things I always ask is, are you bringing men into the home where there are underage children? So I ask you, and you said, no, 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 no. I am not bringing men in the home. Now, no. Chelsea comes in and says, yes, she is, and I have text messages from the underage children saying, not only is she bringing them home, she's taking my money and bringing, buying them alcohol. Now, if that's, that's true, son, let me finish, and boy. then you can respond, because you need to hear everything I say, okay. because your next answer is going to make a really big determination as to whether or not our conversation can, just... can end. No, you can't, because you haven't heard the, the question yet. Ask the date. You need to hear what I'm saying or we're done. Because if you've blatantly lied to me, we're done. Okay. If, in fact, you are bringing men into the home with underage children, and, in fact, you are then giving them alcohol inside the home around underage children, now you're stacking risk on top of risk on top of risk. If, in fact, you then are giving the children even over-the-counter sleep aids where you're rendering them to an altered state of consciousness, now I'm stacking risk factor on top of risk factor on top of risk factor. So just from my standpoint, this is getting to the point where as a mandated reporter, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get to a point where I got to start picking up the phone and calling the Department of Child and Family Services. Did you ask your son to videotape this? No, I didn't. I asked my daughter to. Do y'all have any boundaries with these children at all? I want you to tell me the truth. And I don't want to hear a bunch of yeah, but, maybe, sort of, no. kind of spin. You need to speak with the truth, because this is being taped. And trust me. Child Protective Services will look at this interview and they will carefully review your response. Right. So did you lie to me when I asked you, are you bringing men in the home around these children? I don't give a damn of the date. Currently, no. I didn't ask you currently. I didn't ask you in the last 72 hours, in the last week, the last three weeks. I asked you if you're bringing men into the home. I didn't say in the last year, two years, three years, one week, two weeks. I just ask you if that's been part of the pattern of this relationship. And you said no. I brought, Are you changing your answer now? And if so, okay, change your I answer. I brought one person to the house. One person. My minor children were not there. That makes it better? No, it doesn't. <clears throat> but that's the point, Rachel. That is the point. But get this. Chelsea, you know what's going on right now in our lives? Yep, I do. Because you're there. It doesn't matter if I'm there. I have connections and it doesn't even... You have connections. Yeah. You're at my house. You know what's going on? I don't even need to know what's going on in your house. I know. You, the you know. The kind of person you are. Yep. Yeah. Did you meet a man on the internet? That's where I met that guy, yeah. Did you tell us that you continued to meet with him four times? Yes. Did you say that your son and your 12-year-old were there? and did not like him. And you were drunk.
They hit a sign. I was drunk. They hit a sign I did not. when he left. The police stopped him a couple blocks down the road because he hit a stop sign. And he was drunk? Well, if he hit a stop sign. He had a trailer, and the trailer ran he, it over he, he, when he turned. He started drinking at 9 o'clock till whenever the case was gone. No. Yeah. I'm glad you were there to know it all. Rach, you, you know, you, and, and if that was it, and that was the extent of it, then that's what I want to know. You said Katrina and my 13-year-old were there. My son did not approve of him or me bringing my friend into my house. My daughter didn't mind. Right. She sat at the table, but my son was acting like an unruly kid. My son called his father and told him what was going on. Right. Sent me a video. And he's texting me. By the me. way, did you ask your son to videotape this? No, I didn't. No, he, he's, he's... Have you ever him. asked your son no. to videotape his mother? No. Have you ever asked him to audio tape his mother? No. I, you know what? I asked my daughter to. Pardon me? I asked my daughter to. Which Katrina. daughter? Katrina. She's going to kick the crap out of her. And, and what that's she not do? even what she said. Well, that's why I told her to record. Katrina was mad. So she, we were talking in the kitchen, you me and my friend. And she, Katrina was mad because she was there and she went and slammed the door. Went back upstairs after the third time of slamming the door. And my friend went up the steps and opened the door and told her, you don't need to be slamming that door. And Next time I'll later, come she up. kicked her out of the house. I did not kick her out of the yes, house. Did. Your son sent you a 30-second video. Yeah, this was uh, in 2013. No, it, it wasn't was, 2013. No, 12, 12, but your son sent you yeah. a 30-second yep, video. Yeah, yeah. Do you all have any boundaries with these children at all? No, I, do, I didn't no, ask him to, don't. Dr. Phil. I, don't have I didn't boundaries. ask him to. He, I do not he took put, it upon himself. I don't he goes, my... look what's going on while you're gone, Dad. I don't put You the... said to him, see what's going on. You told us, you said to him, see what's going on. Well, he was, okay, because... That's okay, what you said okay, to us. Okay, I probably, I probably did. It, you know, it's, it's been a long time, Dr. Phil. 2012, yeah. I okay, didn't... we're going to take a break. We're, we're going to meet George and Rachel's 18-year-old daughter. We're going to find out why she says she had to call the police on her own mother. We're going to add her to this group. Chelsea, stay with us, all right? We'll be right back. My mom brought a stranger home and had sex with him when my 12-year-old and my 7-year-old little brother were still up. I heard everything, and the 12-year-old heard the bed moving. When Katrina, our first daughter, was born, all hell broke loose. My wife, Rachel, then had something to control me with by uh, telling me that if I didn't get home from wherever I might be, that she was going to hurt my daughter. I would get angry. She would see it. And so what she would do is defuse me by throwing herself at me. Rachel used sex to defuse our arguments. That's her number one arsenal. George says his wife, Rachel, is a horrible mother who neglects their children and even gave their eight-year-old son and seven-year-old twins melatonin to make them go to sleep so she could go out partying with her boyfriend. She's shaking her head, no, no, no. Rachel and George's 18-year-old daughter, Katrina, says she is so tired of her parents' toxic behavior, they both need to grow up and stop making her take on the role of parent to her siblings. There's just too much drama between my family. My parents doing all this fighting. They constantly argue in front of me and the little ones. My mom would leave me with the kids every day, just to go to the bars, because she knows that I would babysit them. She's selfish like that. Honestly, I hate her. My mom brought a stranger home and had sex with him when my 12-year-old and my 7-year-old little brother were still up. I heard everything and the 12-year-old heard the bed moving. I felt like I should have told her and straight to her face saying, why would you bring a guy home in the middle of the night just to have sex with them in your bed when everyone can hear you? I just don't want to be in the middle of it. I just want to escape altogether. I am three months pregnant. I don't want my mom around my baby ever after what she's done to me. I just like want to get away from them. My mother kicked me out because I had put up with her crap so much and I'm like, I'm done with it. I just told her off, I'm done with her. When she's angry, she normally takes it out on me. She'll yell at me. She'll make me feel worthless. It makes me feel like I'm nothing to her. I mean, I'm nothing to her. Well, Katrina, I'm uh, 
I'm glad you're joining us. I wish we were talking about a hundred other things. You're very upset with the environment you're living in, correct? Yes, I am. And you're, you're very <laughs> upset with your mother. Yes. What is your main complaint with her? I just don't like the way she leaves me babysitting for hours. It's just so she can go to the bar. When I'm pregnant, who does that? And now she's doing it a lot. <clears throat> yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And half of the time I would cover up for her because she told me so many lies about my own father. Uh -huh. I did not tell your dad. You did too. Stop lying. I'm done with your crap. I didn't. It, that's why. Stop. You, that's stop. Why I, I don't want to hear from you, okay? You say on New Year's Eve, you said she went out and came home at 1 a.m. drunk with a guy other because than her boyfriend brought her home? Because for New Year's, I was like, I was, I came back from a friend's house. And then later on at night, she comes home with this one dude. Don't even know who he is. We thought it was her boyfriend, but it wasn't. Are oh. you giving these children melatonin? I occasionally give them melatonin so that they sleep at night. They're boys, they high energy levels, you know, and, but not so I can go out. And do it's you really want to drug your kids to sleep? Like, who cares if it's natural? I don't drug them to sleep. But what is that? But what what, what time is a reasonable time? In your eyes, you're a parent, right? What's a reasonable... I'm not a parent, Rachel. Don't okay, get smart. Okay, I know that. But what's a reasonable time for them to go to bed? Midnight? Well, why don't you be the parent, Did you, you put know? up a post on December 14th asking for food? Yes, I did. Why? Because <clears throat> I, like, I get I'm 18 and I'm to cook. I get that, that I should be able to cook. I post on Facebook, I'm like, if, if you love me, if someone loves me, you, can you bring me food? And she messaged me asking what food I wanted. He is like, do you want any McDonald's? I'll bring you some. But I was still mad at him at the time. And so I'd ignore him and I told her, yeah, I did. And then she never brought me food. Who brought your food? He brought me food at 11. Because he's like, do you want pizza? And I'm like, sure. He so you're saying you were there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday without food? There is food in my house if she wants to cook. What are you people doing? <laughs> Where, what are you doing? What do you, what do you do all day? Well, I work. You, you, are you out of town? No, I, yeah, out of town. Yeah, I work uh, 100 miles from, from home. I, I commute 200 miles a day. And, and where are you? I just recently went back to work this past week. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I let Rachel handle the finances for the family. It has ruined us. I am on the verge of bankruptcy. He wanted no part of it, except for when something went wrong, then he had somebody to blame. I started a, a trucking company. Rachel opened up a credit card under the business, spending $500 to $1,000 a week. I had to take a home equity loan to pay off this $4,500. My banker told me that I had to stop my wife or she was going to bankrupt me. Rachel has been stealing identities for her own financial gain. She's stolen my daughter's. She opened up a QVC uh, account in her name when Katrina was 16 years old. Well, she's stolen her dad's. I had Visa calling my house asking for Rachel's father. Rachel had opened up an account in his name and racked it up to $3,200. I was very angry with Rachel. How could you do this to our family? Well, George says his wife, Rachel, has not only had multiple affairs, but is also cheating on him financially, causing him to lose his trucking company and be on the verge of bankruptcy. But Rachel says George is just using her as a scapegoat, and she is not the reason that he lost all of his money. I asked family law um, attorney Lynn Sudik if, to join us, and she says if George and Rachel end up in a custody battle, uh, it will be one bad parent against another bad parent. It's like you don't have a great choice here. Lynn, you, you've fought through these things a, a million times. W what do you see here? 
Well, first, other than you, there's no one credible on the stage. And that is going to be so difficult in a custody battle because someone who doesn't even know you is going to have to decide the fate of your children. They'll hear a couple hours of testimony and they'll have to try to figure out the facts. And as I hear them, you both contradict everything you say. So that's going to be the hardest thing. The court's going to look at the fact that you're alienating your children, that you're asking them to tape the other parent. That's not in the best interest of the children. And what you're doing is really damaging the children. The court is going to have to decide which alienator is better. What Lynn is, is telling you here is that both of you should be horrified at the potentialities here. Because in this situation, it is a crapshoot. You have no idea what a court might do <laughs> in a situation, it would be hard to predict, don't you think? Well, it would be hard to predict, but there is one problem that we haven't really discussed. George re really doesn't seem to be available. What would you tell them they need to do to maximize the, the, the healthiest alternative for this, this family? First, they have to realize how much they're hurting their children. They can hate each other all they want. But really, they don't understand it. They're hating their children by what they're doing. So they have to go to a parenting class. They need to learn how to be a good parent. They have to promote the other parent. They may not like them, but they have to promote the other parent to their <clears throat> children. They need to change their ways. Do you believe that if you defeat her, you win? No. Because you said, I asked you, why are we what? here? And you said, because I want everybody to know how bad she is. I said, so it's basically character assassination. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, listen, I, I'm, I'm really trying to help you here. I know you are, Doctor. You, seriously, you, you don't want to do that. The best gift you can give your children is to support a relationship between them and their mother. That's the greatest gift you can give your children. The best gift you can give your children is to support a relationship between them and their father. As far as these children go, we need to, we need to respect your children's mother. You need to respect your children's father. You need to take them out of the middle. It is a great gift to those children. I, I'm just telling you. There are some things I, I want to do for this family when we come back. We'll be right back. I, I never have been of the opinion that we're doing eight-minute cures up here, you know, the segment of people, we fix their lives. This is the beginning, not the end. And, and we try to help people uh, when they leave here. And one of the ways that we've started doing that um, is both medically and psychologically is through Doctor on Demand, which is uh, an app, a company that... Jay and I've created over the last few years that makes it really easy to do. And I, I want to start with you. I think you're in a pressure cooker right now, you know, hormonally, stress-wise, and otherwise. And I, I, I hate that for you. So through Doctor on Demand, I want to get you some help with this. And the good okay. news about this is you don't have to get dressed every day and get in your car and drive to an appointment, you can do it on your computer right there at home. And we're going to contact a clinical psychologist right now that I have arranged for you to talk to. And her name is Dr. Rachel uh, Lusagorsky. And uh, Rachel, are you there? I'm here, Dr. Phil. Uh, I'm so glad that you're, you're joining us. One of my biggest concerns here is that Katrina is 18, she's three months pregnant, and she's under a lot of stress and pressure, and I would very much like for you to be involved with her and start helping her right away. Is that something you can do for us? Definitely. And this is all private between the two of you. Okay. Uh, and, and that privacy will be respected. Dr. Lusagorsky, you, you guys can do, you'll set up a time to do this with her and, 
and you'll start focusing on what first? I guess the stress and pressure she's under right now, correct? Correct, yes. She's right now, as you mentioned, in a pressure cooker and she's pregnant and she needs all the support she can get. Will you do this? Yes. You'll connect with her. And, and uh, listen, I, thank you, doctor. We'll get that set up right away. And you guys, I, I want very much for you guys to work out a co-parenting plan here. And if you are willing to work on that, I will provide you the professional counsel to do that with. Will you do, w do, do, will no. you do that? Because no. I'm telling you, you don't want to walk through that courtroom door no. and get into a mudslinging contest because you may not like the outcome. No. All right. I, I, I really want to thank all of my guests today. Special thanks to Attorney Lynn uh, Sudik, uh, Dr. Rachel Lusagorsky, and our medical team at Doctor on Demand for assisting us with our guest. And, if you at home want to have your own Doctor On Demand, you can go to Google Play Store uh, or the iTunes App Store and download the DOD app. And as I say, you can do it for your medical needs or for your mental and emotional uh, help as well. Log on to DrPhil.com. Share your thoughts on our message boards today. You can also find me on Facebook or Twitter using hashtag DrPhil and hashtag Claims of Affairs. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Find some peace here, okay? George, find some peace here. Chelsea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Lynn, thanks so much. Well done. Thanks. Thanks, Josh.